Welcome to Elite Athletes TV. Today, we're looking at one of my all-time favorite pass concepts, the smash route. It's easy reads, simple completions. It's a great play for quarterbacks. It's coming up right now. Ready? Hey there, I'm Mike Pulaski, 11-year pro quarterback, and I played in every league in North America while I was playing. The NFL, the CFL, the Arena League, and the XFL. And because of that, I had the opportunity to look at a bunch of different offenses. And all of them shared one thing in common. They all had some version of the smash route. Now, they may have called it by a different name, but it was the smash concept within that offense. And the reason they had it is because it's so effective. As a quarterback, you have certain concepts that you tend to gravitate towards, that you like, that you have confidence in. And for me, the smash route was it. You can throw on five, hit and throw. You could throw on five, hitch and throw. You could make a read no matter what defense they played. There was always an answer. And so today we're going to take a look at my NFL playbook, my uh, Arena League playbook, and my college playbook. We'll talk about it out of different personnel sets. We'll talk about how you attack defenses with it and how to make quick reads and throw lots of touchdowns. So we'll start off in Tampa. Let's take a look. All right. You can see here, simple 10 personnel. One running back, no tight ends. As we've got it drawn up, this is versus nickel. It's out of a nickel passing offense. But this is the smash route, the smash concept at its simplest. You have a corner route by the inside man and some kind of either sit down versus zone. You can see right there, it says zone. Or versus man, it runs away. You can also sit and run or you can come back out of this thing. So that is is where the smash route itself came from. That's, that's called the smash route. And so that's how it got its name. On this play, it's a simple mirrored play, corner off the top, and again, that same smash route that has about 47 options on it on the outside. You can see progression for the quarterback here. Because this is a mirrored play, it says two or three for your first read on those corner routes. Now, that said... If you're a quarterback and you have the option, I would stay to the right side first here. And the reason for it is this back is a check arc release. And so what that gives you is that triangle read, which you're always looking for versus zone. It also keeps your eyes front side. If you get up, end up getting in trouble and you have pressure, you have some kind of man. If you have pressure, that back's going to pick it up. If you have simple man, that back, could have a mismatch versus a linebacker. It's a nice runaway. So your first read on that side would be three. If that's not there because he stumbles or the DB gets a good press or for whatever reason, this is actually a great second option because you're probably going to have a mismatch inside versus the linebacker. Same thing to the backside. If you love a matchup, if you know that you've got a speed guy right here and they have a strong safety type, a little bit big, can't cover as well. That's your matchup. That is your first read. Super simple. All right. So now let's say it's not man. So it's great man beater. We talked about that. But let's say it's not man. Let's say they come out in a cover two. So you got a corner, safety, safety, corner. This is a super simple read for quarterbacks right now. In traditional cover two, this corner is going to try to force that inside release. He's trying to funnel stuff back inside to the safeties. And so as a receiver, the way I, I taught these guys was try to force that outside release, engage that corner, make sure that he is locked into you. And as long as you're doing that, you're keeping him occupied. What that does is it cleans up that throw right there. This guy breaking off going vertical, the safety has to honor that vertical push. And if he just sticks his foot in the ground and breaks this to the outside on the corner route, that is a hit five and throw ball, and that is open all day long versus cover two. So that is a, a great option versus cover two right there versus cover three. We'll call this strong side because you got the back of this side. Strong safety is down low. Free safety up, up top. Corners over here. And you're going to have your Sam. So this Sam is probably going to come you can adjust your protection so that you pick that up and get your back out. But as a quarterback, the way I would teach this is I would make sure to let this receiver know you have to either outside release so that you wall this strong safety or straight stem right at him and engage him, get his attention, 
make sure that he's engaged with you before you break to that corner route. Because what you really want to do with this football is if he's engaged in the middle and he can't go anywhere, this is an automatic. As soon as that ball, as soon as that receiver sits down on the outside, you hit your fifth step and you get it out to the outside. Now, if you're watching this and you're a defensive back trying to figure this out, toughest reads, if you're a corner in this for a quarterback, is if this guy stays a little bit muddy, likely a quarterback's going to throw that ball down low. So two things you could do if you're a defensive back here is you can play it and bait the quarterback by starting high and driving low as soon as he turns his head. Or you can start by staying firm in the flat here. So guarding low, but knowing that you're going to retreat out and hit that one. That is a longer throw as a corner. That is a potential big play in terms of an interception. Both of these, if you can bait a quarterback into throwing underneath and get that pick six, that is a big deal too. So I just let you DBs behind the curtain here to see how to play this. So that's a look at it out of that nickel 92 twin angle in Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This is a pick aside. Again, if I had to pick a side, I would go one two here based on the fact that you have that triangle read down low so as you can see in the nfl even versus nickel it's the basic concept now let's take a step back and look at how we ran it in college out of 20 personnel at how we used to run this in college all right so this is back from my cal days uh, back in the early 90s and as you can see here we call this play silver cruise and here we're talking about Oni running this out to the right-hand side. It's for four right-hand quarterbacks, and that's the reason we're doing that here. But we're getting this back out. This is a middle of the field to the right hash. You would not run this from the wide field for two reasons. One, that becomes a very long throw for a quarterback to the wide field. Two, you've got a running back running this out of the backfield. So we saw on the last play, we were in... 10 personnel, which was one running back, no tight ends. Here, we're in 20 personnel, which is two running backs, no tight ends. This is what we used to call a, our bombers formation. And so what this gives you is three wide receivers in the game, two running backs, tailback to this side, fullback away over here. Excuse me, fullback over here. So... You're going to read this exactly the same way as a quarterback. You see it's drawn up versus cover two right here. Your middle receiver this time, and I love this part of the route, is going to draw, and you see that little squiggly line there? That means he's going to try to wall that Sam linebacker off, try to keep him from getting to the outside, and then he's going to get vertical through that strong safety. The reason he's doing this is to hold this safety on the hash because this back is going to come out of the backfield. Now, coaching points for that back. This is, you can see it's the slide protection. This back is helping and blocking. We're sliding the line here to pick up whatever we've got. This back is what you call a scat release. So whether he's here, you know, he could just as well be a line or a receiver from that position. But because this is a scat release, he has no blocking assignment. He's going to get out into the route right now. Outside receiver is going to do the same thing, that little smash route with every option versus man, he runs away. Versus zone, he sits it down. But he is essentially there to get the attention of this corner and lock him into the flat. This back right now, upfield, again, hits it at 10 yards and out to the sideline, a little more angle on it because he's coming for depth, so it has to time up better. It may not be a firm stick the foot and go, he may just kind of S route this to the outside, but he's going for that same exact soft spot out here. If for some reason this safety gets nosy, sees that back coming out and jumps it, now this vertical route is an absolute winner for the quarterback. He can throw a P in there and absolutely stroke it when that safety vacates. So super simple read. As a quarterback, I come out, I key this flat corner right there. I see him. If he stays low, I've got this throw. Check that safety. If the safety stays high, that's a winner. If the safety drives, now that's number two for me. I've got that right now. So let's say it, 
the other thing that you can do on this route, by the way, is you can always tag this backside receiver. You could have some kind of route combo going on back here so that you have a paired route. Like you could run him on a hook route here with this swing to the outside. You're putting that same vertical stretch on that corner. You could have him, the way I used to love to have him run it, uh, as this play evolved in the offense, is run a deep over here, about 15 yards, with that little dog leg. So his stem comes inside right now and gets vertical. With your eyes as a quarterback heading this direction, that defense will stray this direction, and they'll forget about these backside passing lanes. So if for some reason this got everything fell apart over here, your tailback fell, da- fell out, you know, coming out of the backfield or something happened. If you're running that little deep over, you have something to check back to without having to come all the way back across the field. So you can see, you don't have to lock yourself into any personnel groups. You can run it from a bunch of different looks until you get the defensive look that you want. Now let's take a look at it from the Arena League playbook. And remember, the Arena League football field was 28 yards wide by 50 yards long with eight yard end zones and so it was a much smaller space but you still had eight guys per side which means you had 77 percent more bodies on the field a lot more congested that meant that things happened really quickly nfl guys are the fastest in the world right best fastest football players going but things happened super quick in the arena football league and so you had to be absolutely on top of your reads and your throws and we'll take a look at it real quick right now from an AFL playbook from the Miami Hooters. In this case, same exact stretch you see here. You've got that little smash route. On the inside, you've got the corner route. And so you can run this from a five-step here. This play is called 500 Lupe Rocco, which is funny. This is from the Miami Hooters playbook because everything in this system was a digit system, but for some reason they decided to call this differently as a whole concept play. Again, that smash route, boom, corner over the top. If you look down below here, the quarterback, they just give you simple key safety to corner. Well, that's that's actually wrong, the way that you should read this. In the Arena League, you have safety, corner, and corner. So one or the other, there's, there's only a couple coverages you can run. If the corner comes down and tries to press here and plays the flat, that's called a cloud coverage in the Arena League. If the Corners high, you could play three off the top, or you could play straight man across where everybody's locked up. In this case, we'll take a look at this versus cover two, and it's the same exact read. The safety over the top, corner down low. If he sits on this and squats and plays that flat, now this receiver, as he comes out, you throw it, bang five, and hit him. Versus cover three, super simple for a quarterback to read this. Cover three, he's up high. If this corner gets any depth, whatever, you look him to this corner route and you drop down underneath with your eyes. And then versus man, this is going to win. He's going to take it in a little bit further because he's trying to shake him. But this is really what you're going for versus man here. You want to get that big hitter, you know, deep corner route for the touchdown. This is the big winner versus man. So if you can get that, you take that route. Now I want to draw up my favorite way of running it, and that is out of trips. And I'm going to show you a couple different things you can use in your playbook and ways to get to this. But I love running smash out of trip sets, getting three receivers to a side because it gives you unique stretches on a defense. So here we are out of base 10 personnel. You can call this 11 personnel because I've got him drawn up as an H here, but he could just as easily be a tight end, a move tight end, especially in high school where you have those hybrid guys, that, that's a perfect spot for one of those hybrid guys because it can lock that defense into the base personnel group. Here I've got it drawn up versus nickel. You can see my nickel guy right here. And uh, for football fans out there, that nickel package means five DBs. So one, two, three, four, and you bring in that fifth DB and take out one linebacker to give yourself nickel. So here you see trips. Again, we're going to go with that smash concept. This is cover two. So... On the outside, that smash, trying to occupy that corner. You run the simple corner route here, bang, 10 yards, right? He makes that break. And then you run the seam route on the inside. So what that does for you, just like I showed you out of that Cal playbook, is it gives you that open window to throw to. 
this seam route should occupy that safety. So he should be out of the picture. On the vertical, this, this nickel, if he's playing true zone, is going to come in here and play that hook to curl zone out here. And this corner is going to try to smash and then look. He's looking back inside. If there's nothing coming vertical at him, he can stay in his flat. As it starts to get vertical, if he sinks off, then it's an easy throw underneath for your quarterback. It's getting a little messy there. Now, here's another way to look at it if you're a coach. So let's say the X, not here, let's say, the, excuse me, the H starts over on this side. Now, oftentimes when you motion across, teams will check to this cover two look. It gets you in the perfect position to make that smash throw. Now, you can run him vertical again. Same look with that smash. Same exact read for a quarterback. And here's your open throw on the soft spot, depending on what that corner does. Or you can run this as a smash switch. So once again, we'll start with the H over here. Run him across the field. Now, rather than running him vertical up the field, you can have this be your corner guy and this be your vertical clear. In that case, this safety may get nosy and he may peek over here. He may get the attention on this corner route. And as a quarterback, now you can move your read up top first because of that motion. As they check down to two, safety comes across. He may look at that corner and you may be able to just to throw that seed right into that center read, that middle seam, and have an easy one running for six. So different looks. I love that. You could also take, I've got him listed as an F because we were limited on what we could use here. But you could take your F and start him outside and motion him down. And now as you motion him down, he can hit that vertical seam. You can run the smash from the inside. There's just so many different options for you here as a quarterback. And then backside, you can do that same thing where you can tag it with that deep over. You can run the deep hook. You can do different things that if all else, you know, if everything breaks down on this side, you can always come back. And remember, young quarterbacks, you can always throw the football away too. You don't have to hold it, need it, and don't wait forever on something to come open if you don't have protection. So you can see, whether it's the NFL, college football, or arena football, the smash concept is an absolute winner. If you like what I'm doing, subscribe, hit the bell, you know the drill. Please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions or any comments, please leave them down below. I'm Mike Pulaski. This is Elite Athletes TV quarterback training. Look forward to seeing you next time.